Quasar's intersection component is kind of more of a, a helper component. It's basically saying, hey, when you get to this element on the page, display it. So by default, don't show this component. When it's visible on the page, then I want you to render that component. And we can do some cool stuff like animations and other cool things with it as well. I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with Quasar's default image, and I'm going to change this from flex equal to column, which is basically just using flex but in a column so that everything goes down ways like this. Then we can say here, v-4 is equal to i in 60 to basically render 60 of these images, and then we'll say the key is equal to i. Save that, and now we have 60 of the Quasar logo images. Cool. Now what we can do is wrap this inside of a Q-intersection component. And then rather than having 60 images, we're going to have 60 of that intersection component. So let's take a look at that and see how it works. If I scroll down there, notice that it gradually starts showing more and more components. And you can kind of tell this is happening because this scroll bar kind of jitters on my way down. But that's not a very nice experience. The user probably wants to know how long this page is, especially if it's like a landing page or some sort of marketing page. That would be a really horrible and annoying experience for the user. So in that case, what we can actually do is say how high this image is going to be. Basically give it dimensions beforehand, sort of like a placeholder. So we can do that by grabbing this style tag and just whacking it on the intersection. So the intersection is going to have a width and height set before we even start scrolling down. And now if I scroll down the page, this is actually working, but you can't even tell that it's working because this image is cached and so it basically displays straight away. But if I go full screen here, inspect the page, notice that we've got this image element and we've got these two image elements here, but now we've just got intersection components with nothing inside of them. So this is basically proof that all of the other images down the page haven't been rendered yet. But as we scroll down, see what happens here? Notice that it gradually basically puts those images into the page. And this can be good to make your page super efficient, but we can also do some other cool stuff as well. And before we move on though, just to drive this point home, if I change this to a Q-image, and then we set this to an image somewhere else on the net, so let's go to fixsum.photos to generate a random image. And we want one that's 200 by 200. This is a really cool site that I use a lot. Now, if I quickly scroll to the bottom of the page, we can see that this image is now loading as we get to it. So that's kind of cool. And once again, since this is being cached, it's kind of hard to tell. But you can imagine if this wasn't cached, as soon as you scroll to that point in the page, it would slowly show that spinner and then display the image when it's ready. So this can make your page much more efficient. It's probably going to improve your loading times as well if you use the Q intersection component with the Q image component. They're a really great combination. But enough of that. Let's move to the fun part. If I add in here transition and set the transition equal to flip dash up, check this out. As we scroll down the page, the image gradually flips up as we go down. Kind of a nice effect. And if you do it really quickly, you get this really cool kind of, I don't know, 3D card look at effect. <laughs> I reckon that's pretty cool. Nice. Another thing we can do is say once here. This is especially useful if you're using the Q image component because it's basically saying, hey, once you've intersected this image and you've loaded it into the page, don't bother doing the animation again or don't bother loading this again. We're just going to keep it there. So now as I scroll down the page, we get that effect. But if I scroll up and then down again, oh, I forgot to save this file. <laughs> so let's take a look again. We'll scroll down a little bit. And now we scroll up and start scrolling down. It's not flipping anymore because once basically says only intersect once and then keep that element on the page. Another thing we can do is set the threshold. So let's get rid of once there and change this to threshold. And if we set this to something like zero, that is the default. So it basically means that as soon as the top of this image, zero, is shown, then I want you to display it. So there we go. We can see it flipping in the moment we hit that image. Now, if we set that to 0 
that's basically saying 50%. So once 50% of that image is shown, then I want you to uh, basically display it on the page. So if we scroll down very slowly here, notice that we can't see it yet, but once we get to 50%, there we go, it becomes visible. So that's good to know. What else can we do? Well, it's probably also worth pointing out that if we set this to one, it's going to wait till the entire image is shown. Once that entire image is visible, it will then flip into place. Oh, one more thing I should point out. When you're using a transition, you usually want to wrap everything inside of here as a inside of its own div. So in this scenario, how about this? Let's set the style with a height equal to 400 pixels, and then we'll set the width equal to 200 pixels. And then I'll basically copy that and paste it into here. And then I'm just gonna whack some lorem ipsum underneath here. So let's say lorem, and then tab that in, save it, and there we go. Now, as we scroll down the page, we still get that flipping effect. But it's kind of silly with a threshold equal to one. So let's get rid of that so you can see this example properly. Scroll back to the top of the page, and there you go. Pretty cool. It's a really awesome component. It can make your page more efficient if you want to only display images when they need to be displayed or things like embedded, uh, embedded views inside of your page. But then it's also cool if you want to add that transition effect. So another thing I should probably point out is that we can add SSR-pre-renderer. What this means is that if you're using SSR mode, it's going to pre-render all of these images on the back end for you. So by default, that's not going to happen, but you might be thinking, well, SSR is basically gonna be super fast and it's gonna handle rendering all of this stuff for me anyway. So I might as well put the pre-renderer on so that it's all just ready to go when the page loads up. So once again, I mean, the Quasar team has just thought of everything. It's really cool that we have this attribute for those of you that are using SSR and basically want that tiny bit of extra speed or that extra, that extra decision over how this intersection component is used. So I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I love showing these little components that are just super helpful, quality of life type components where we basically don't have to implement all of this functionality ourselves. So yeah, that's the Q-intersection component. See you in the next video.